The FCC has rules about how to operate ham radios, but there's also some unwritten rules. Let's call them common courtesy or common sense rules that you need to follow if you're going to be operating a handheld ham radio like this Radiotity on your local repeaters. Now, if you're an experienced ham and you already know these unwritten rules, please stick around. Let me know if I miss something in the comments section or if there's something regional. I'm really interested to know if there's regional differences or country differences in what is kind of frowned upon or what's encouraged when using repeaters in your area. Hope this is interesting. Let's get going. Today I'm at Providence Park, one of my favorite operating spots and just outdoor areas. It's in North Georgia, Milton, Georgia to be exact. And it's a beautiful day. It's about, I don't know, low 50s, but uh, nice sunny skies. So great day to come out, shoot a video, get some exercise and mess around with ham radio. Let's start things off with a do. You do want to listen first. This means when you turn on your radio or switch frequencies to a different repeater, you want to listen for a good 30, maybe even 60 seconds to see if someone's using that repeater. You never know. If you just turn on the radio, fire up the push to talk button, you might be interfering with somebody who just previously called out for a friend or, uh, you know, wants to start a conversation. You don't know. So just listen first. Again, common courtesy. I have more do's on this list than don'ts. So here's another do. Do leave space. What I mean by that is if you're having a conversation with someone, a QSO, and it's going back and forth, and you don't leave space between the end of their transmission and when you start, it doesn't leave people room to break in. Somebody might be listening, have something they want to add to your conversation, or they might have other traffic that they would like to use the repeater to get a message to a friend or to make a call, whatever the case might be. So just leave that little bit of room. You don't even have to do it every time, but once in a while, leave a little room between the end of the person you're talking to, their transmission, and the start of yours. How about a don't? Here's a don't. Don't kerchunk the repeater. Kerchunking the repeater is basically when you hit the push to talk button for one second or so, you don't say anything, and uh, it, it triggers the repeater to do a roger beep or a tone or a message somehow letting you know that you got into the repeater. And not only is this against FCC rules, but it's really frowned upon, I think, by most hams because usually it means somebody's using the repeater that probably isn't licensed. And that's aggravating to a lot of hams. So don't kerchunk the repeater. Uh, if you are, do need to test your radio setup, go ahead and give your call sign, say testing or no response required, whatever you need to say to get your test done. But don't just kerchunk the repeater to see if you can get in. I already talked about leaving space between transmissions so someone can break in. Well, another do is do break in. If you want to use the repeater and there's people having a long conversation and you need to use it for something else or you have something to add to their conversation, feel free. Repeaters are public use. If they're leaving space between their transmissions, they're basically encouraging a break. If you have something to add, go ahead, say K4BBL or whatever your call sign is, K4BBL break, and hopefully they'll give you the chance to speak your mind. Another don't, don't dominate a popular repeater. In my area, there's a bunch of different repeaters. One of them's really pretty popular. And if you have a conversation going for an extended period of time uh, where you could be doing that somewhere else, either on a lesser used repeater, or if you're close enough together, maybe even simplex, do that instead of dominating the popular repeater in your area. Uh, if it's the only one you and your friend can hit, by all means, use it. Have as long a conversation as you want, but if there is an alternative like a UHF repeater that's barely used and you can both use that, do that for your long conversations. QSY to a different repeater or frequency or simplex. UHF, VHF repeaters are awesome. You can do a lot of things besides voice transmission. And if you want to do something other than voice, you should ask first. In other words, if you want to do something funky with echo link, or you want to send an image using slow scan television, or you want to send digital messages between you and your friends, certainly can do it. Just ask first, you know, key up and say, hey, K4 BBL, uh, does anyone have a prom if I send an SST, SSTV image? And if you don't hear anything, 
go ahead and use it. Operators put repeaters in on the air for them to be used and you know doing digital modes using echo link that they've connected to their repeater or doing something like slow scan television you know using the repeater it's great just ask first nets nets are like conference calls for ham radios most of them happen uh, there's nets on high frequency on certain frequencies in certain points of the day but there's a lot of nets on local uhf vhf repeaters and you should so do participate in nets it's a great way to get to know the community of hams in your area and become part of that community of hams in your area and if you're a little mic shy and you don't want to have a long conversation with someone Many nets are check-in nets, meaning all you do is key up, you give them your call sign and where you're from, maybe your name, and you, they'll check you into that net. It's like a, it's like a check-in, you know, where uh, people, uh, they know who's on the net and who's listening, who's going to participate in the net. So a great way to operate without having to have a long conversation, and it's a great way to become part of the ham radio community in your area. Speaking of Echo Link, if you've seen some of my videos where I do Echo Link, I connect you connect basically through the internet, you connect your repeater with repeater somewhere else in the world and your voice comes out on both repeaters. If your repeater has echo link and you're messing around with it, you've connected or linked two repeaters together, don't leave them linked, okay? Make sure you disconnect them. If you don't, the next operator who comes on and uses that repeater will be unknowingly transmitting on both the local repeater as well as whatever repeater you linked. So unlink them. Repeaters are expensive. To put up a repeater and maintain it, it takes time, effort, and money. And if there's a person who's operating your repeater, or if it's a club, you, and you're gonna be using that repeater quite a bit, I certainly suggest you support that club by joining it, or you support the person operating the repeater by offering to help in any way you can, whatever. But you know, it's a great way uh, to support the people who build up the infrastructure to allow hams to do ham radio stuff. Don't use foul or questionable language uh, on a repeater. I think this is an FCC rule. I'm pretty sure it is, but you know, just watch your language. There's no room for it. Uh, there's a lot of kids who do ham radio. They might be listening, or there might be somebody in their car with their kids in the car. So, you know, common sense. Don't curse over the air. Uh, if it if you can't see it on network TV, if it's a word they don't use on network TV, don't use it on ham radio got one more do and that's do be nice please uh, I've heard stories or seen comments in the comment sections of my video where you know new hams face you know some uh, not disrespect but you know that they're not encouraged to uh, use the repeater or you know they're not friendly people and listen ham radio is all about being friendly and nice and if someone new comes on your repeater a new call sign you know welcome them encourage them a new ham uh, that's great and I think you know a lot of times uh, some tight-knit communities get formed around these repeaters maybe sometimes they don't want outsiders using it I don't know uh, it doesn't happen here in North Georgia but I've heard comments so listen be nice be nice to new people nice to new hams and generally be nice those are the do's and don'ts that I came up with for operating a ham radio on a local repeater if I miss something, if you think uh, something I said isn't right, please leave a comment in the comment section. I'll be looking at those and, and replying as well. I'm most fascinated in finding out if there's differences in different countries, different areas, different parts of the US that have different do's and don'ts that either uh, aren't applicable here in North Georgia or unique to your area. So please leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is K4BBL73. I'm Claire.